Hey, how's it going guys? I'm Paradoxic and welcome back to Supergirl because tell me we're on episode 4 of season 6. Last time we had quite the amount of progression, quite the amount of character progression and story progression. We had Lena taking the biggest of steps in the right direction. She, um, you know what, she tried. She, 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 she actually tried, you know, doing Alexa's back and forth thing one last time with the aid of Brainy. Uh, but in the end, he's he's as stubborn and as evil and as manipulative as ever. So she was like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm leaving the company. You can have it for all I care. I'm Lena Luther. I can do something else. Go get my own shares and you know maybe, maybe even go co-own Catco with Andre or some shit. I don't I don't know. Just you know she she can do literally whatever else she wants. And she was leaving Elcourt behind. She's leaving Lex behind without a single doubt in the world. Um, I assume at some point we're like we 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 might see some interaction with Lillian following that following that ending like seeing if she still like has any reservations or if she's just going to stick with Lex throughout the whole thing or what's going to happen but I mean because she she cares more about the company and then and, and the Luther name than anything else so that kind of thing might be televised like oh Lena Luther walks away from El Corp and maybe the family too so that kind of thing would be like all over the media or all over the news or something so family drama oh wait a family drama almost always makes the news when it comes to celebrities and wealthy people so yeah, it should be interesting to see, but um, but yeah, Lena walked away, so props to her. I can't wait to see how this final season treats her, hopefully positively, hopefully with good vibes and with a happy ending. Hopefully, yeah, let's, let's, let's try and manifest that. Um, but Lena walked away, we had Supergirl um, in the Phantom, I mean, in the Phantom, she's been there literally, you know, so far this entire season, so like, we're not really going to see her anywhere else, but she was in the Phantom Zone, and she uh, she met Nixley, she met Nixley, I believe her name was, I can't, I can't remember her, her, her whole name it's a few other randomized letters from the from the alphabet mixed in there but she was a princess she was a princess who was actually sent there because because she was actually like, like a potential heir for the throne and her father took out her he, he killed her older brother who was a more direct heir and then he sent her to the phantom zone with a bracelet to dampen her magic and everything um so she was sent there so then she met kara and they became friends and now she's going to help them use her magic to actually um to head to try and escape the Phantom Zone. So hopefully they can all escape together. I really don't want them to have to leave anyone behind. Hopefully her and her father and Nixley can escape the Phantom Zone together and she can find a, find a new life on Earth and be, you know, a fifth, or maybe even go back to the fifth dimension and find Nixie and team up with him or whatever. But hope, hopefully she actually survives and makes it out of the Phantom Zone alive with the rest of them this season. So hopefully that is the way her story goes. Uh, but we had that. We had... Um, Lena and Brainy kind of, you know, kind of somewhat sort of bonding over their kind of shared pain and their shared hatred of Lex and wanting to kill him and then realizing that that was a really, you know, pointless idea because either, he, he, either he's going to come back or it's just not really going to bring them any sense of satisfaction. So instead they, they, they instead they decide to both yell into the void. They literally, well, Brainy yelled into the void and everything, so... Yeah, uh, but the whole thing kind of driving the team is their need, their desperation to try and bring Kara back from the Phantom Zone. So hopefully that happens sometime soon. Um, hopefully, again, hopefully hopefully they don't drag it out for too long, but hopefully it actually comes to some, some sense of fruition soon enough and we can see the team reunited and Kara being back and holding the team together again. So that should be fun. Um, but in terms of not being held together, that I think that description would, would, would apply very well to Alex. Alex... Alex was not doing so good. Alex was not doing so good. The episode literally showed us um, her watching um, Kara's last will and testament on the recording crystals from within the fortress, and she was watching that. And, you know, like, fortunately enough, we, by the time we kind of clock into her part of, this part of the episode, we she, she's watching the part where Kara's explaining how important she was to Kara and how, you know, how just, 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 just who she was to her and how much she loved her and everything. So, definitely not helping with emotional kind of, you know, um, like, satisfaction or anything, but luckily for her, Kelly is there. Kelly as ever. Kelly as ever is the kind of golden rainbow of uplift, uh, of, of like, you know, motivation and emotional kind of, you know, like, what's the word, um, kind of like emotional, um, like, alleviation like uh, helping her alleviate her own kind of stress and helping like 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 being there making sure she has someone to talk to to confide in and actually lean on 
or Cryon, Lean and or Lean and Cryon, um, and stuff. So like like Kelly, as always, is just being that person who's there. That is her superpower. She's unleashing her power of, you know, being a fucking fantastic listener and also providing words of comfort and consolation and everything. So yeah, hopefully, um, we still haven't gotten the scene where she actually tells her. That is Kara. That 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 Kara and Supergirl are the same person. Yet, like we still haven't gotten that kind of scene. So I think I don't know. I mean, I don't know if if like Alex was kind of too busy grieving in that last episode to actually see to, to actually tell her. But I think I feel like you know because like I don't know if they're actually gonna wait until they get Kara back or if it's gonna be something else. I think because I think I think I mean story wise it kind of makes sense because right now their focus is on is actually on trying to get Kara back. So you know like telling her would be telling her telling her would be actually like letting her in on that secret it wouldn't really you know push to it wouldn't really get them any closer to saving Kara but it would just be like oh so now at, n- n- now Kelly knows so now she knows that they're both the same person but you know either way if she wants to get Kara back and I mean I don't even know where she I, I don't even know where she thinks Kara is I think because Nia told Nia told um Andrea and fucking what's the name William she 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 told them that um that Kara was actually um, with Cat Grant. She was on, she was on the show, that, that, that she was with Cat Grant. So I don't, I don't know if that's the same lie that um, that Kelly knows and and or believes. I don't know if she actually thinks that Kara is away on a case with Cat Grant, or if she you know thinks that she's just away somewhere. But either way, she doesn't know. So I think now would be a great time to say like you know like that. That's why you know. Um, wait, hang on though. Wait, did she tell her? Because she was watching the recording crystals. I think it would be kind of weird for her to be watching the recording crystals and crying over Supergirl. So, I don't know. Did, did, did she tell... Because, cause, I mean, if, if she was going to tell her, it, it would have been so much better to have it to have it happening on screen. So now I'm confused. Because cause I'm pretty sure they never mentioned it in the actual episode itself. But then she was watching it. She was watching the recording crystals and Supergirl was there. So, does she know the car is Supergirl? I don't know. I, I, I just remember that. Wait, yeah, she was watching the recording crystals and crying over that. So unless unless Kelly then knew that Caro is in fact Supergirl, then it would be kind of weird for her to... I don't know. I, I don't know. Now I've confused myself. and Now my memory is being all faulty because I genuinely cannot remember any any scene <coughs> where Alex told Kelly that Caro and Supergirl are the same person. So I don't know, I guess... We're gonna have to go in and see because if, if it's if it's not in this episode, then it's gonna feel very very weird. But otherwise, yeah, it might have been an off. If, if it's an off screen thing, that's just stupid. It needs to be an on screen thing. Like like I think you know it it needs to be something that that we that we can actually see them kind of showing and like her telling and her sharing that kind of secret and stuff. So yeah, and I mean especially after they had Lena kind of you know em- emphasizing the importance of telling Kelly and being like, oh, she's your person. You need to tell her. You need to let her in and, you know, officially kind of, you know, initiate her into the group and whatever. But I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, n- now I just feel kind of stupid, stupid, stupid thinking, thinking about that. Like, oh, she was watching the recording crystals and, you know, unless she knew that that was, that, that was Kara, then it would be, it would feel kind of weird having to watch that. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. And, and she was, I think she was even in the suit. She was in the Supergirl suit when she was actually doing the, um, the, um, the last kind of testimony stuff. So I don't know. Yeah, so now I'm going to go into this episode confused as to whether any of that actually happened or not. So yeah, that is great. That is great. Um, but either way, that is all the stuff I can remember from the last episode. And, and um, yeah, pretty much all, all there is to it. I think we we, 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 we had some stuff with um, Magan and Jean too. Mag- Magan almost turned into a, into a um, I was about to say Dementor. Um, no, she turned into a Phantom. She turned into a Phantom because the Phantom's going to infect you with a werewolf style scratch and the next silas turned into one silas turned into a phantom but the phantoms very nearly converted um and gone so that is very very dangerous and we have a few in containment so all that stuff happened but yes that that's definitely pretty much all i can actually pick up from the last one so on to episode four of this gracious series of this gracious season um if you guys want to catch the full length reaction by the way because this one will, will only be the highlights says by the fair use stuff so if you want to catch the full length version that one will be over on Patreon, so you can go check that out over there. And yeah, that is it. So on to episode, on to episode four of season six of Supergirl. So yeah, let's go. We're going home. Great. I, why do I feel like this 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 still isn't gonna work out? They've still found like another way home, but it's still it's just it's still not just not gonna work out. Something's gonna go wrong. Yeah. And 
that brings us to the end of our tower. Oh, tour. Lena's Thank at the you. watchtower. Those always make me feel like an awkward schoolgirl, so thanks to you all for making me feel so welcome. Well, I call it a prototrap. A prototrap. designed to trap Prime Phantom and his progeny. It looks like a Ghostbusters thingy pack. Just like in the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters, yeah. yeah. It's the perfect movie. Yeah. The prototrap is real. Okay. Rescuing Supergirl. Oh, that's and amazing. Phantom infection. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, if he really wants to use it, he really wants to use it, yeah. Honey, you want instructions? He's a ghostbuster. <laughs> I think I'll figure it out. <laughs> oh god, it even does it the same way, yeah? Yeah, it does it the same way. Oh, there we go. Oh, oh, oh! Midville High School, that was young Alex and Kara. So she's still got the super strength, Sorry. or at least regular strength. Super strength, I just can't Yeah, I okay, get regular strength. Are you sure yeah. this is right? I know it's in here. It should look like a mirror. That only the righteous can activate. Instead of a reflection. Mirrors haven't really worked out too well in the Arrowverse right so far, so I can only imagine how this is gonna go. It's not working. I was wrong to have hoped. Oh damn. I mean a broken mirror is generally bad luck. So yeah. But Sean, if we don't act now, not only will National City be lost, but the infection will reach a point of no return. A global pandemic. If we only go after Kara. Don't want one of those, do we? Don't want one of those. Right really don't yeah. want one of those. Can we do mm -hmm. both? So I'll work on a way to try and copy McGon's sensing power to track Supergirl. See, it's a win-win. You heard the lady. Let's go. Great. Oh, good to see Lena and Alex working together again. Yeah, that partnership is very much needed. No, of course. Yeah. Okay, so what are you thinking? Strawberry glaze with sprinkles is a rare delicacy. <laughs> that is true. With your inhibitors off, you're feeling a lot of emotions right now. Stress eating. Oh, we've all been there. We've all done that more times than we can count. No shame in it, Brainy. Yeah, no right shame now, in you're it. you're not. Hey, that is the most relatable thing he's ever done. I've been That's there. the most relatable thing. Car and Alex, too. Their dumpling obsession. <laughs> well, I can stop comfort eating whenever I want. Yeah, you just don't want to. Yeah, you just don't want to. <laughs> oh, oh and God. He attacked your father and then he tried to take the mirror, but I chased him off. I knew we shouldn't have split up. Yeah, why would you split up? Look, you're in the Phantom Zone where very few of you knows your way around. I think my ankle is broken. <sighs> They're not all making it out of this, are they? They're really not all gonna make it out of this. You said you need a piece of my sister to track her in the Phantom Zone. Yeah, but if I extract that, you'll lose the recording forever. Well, what matters most is that we get back the real Kara. Yeah, I mean, I'm hopeful, but there's no guarantee. It's worth a try for her. And, and anything, even the tiniest shred of hope is I worth a try. I trust you. <laughs> Lena and Alex working together. That's exactly what we need. Oh god, they're wearing goggles. Oh. The science minds, the science minds are back. Yeah, yeah. We don't see enough science from Alex that much anymore. No. Yep, young Alex and Kara. Who's that? Who's that guy in with them? And I know how hard you worked on making a device that could track Kara. But now they can't you use need to recalibrate it. Recalibrate it so we can find the chrysalis instead. Oh. If we recalibrate it, we'll time. override Kara's DNA. We'll lose our only chance to save her. We'll find another way. Kara would always choose saving others. That's just who she is. And how do you think she would feel if we rescued her and she found out that we let thousands, no, maybe she would not. hundreds of thousands of people die just so we could have her? She would not be happy. She would not be pleased. Supergirl relies, and all that really matters. Is that you do the right thing today? Oh, she can just summon it just like that. Sorry. Oh, damn. I can't take no for an answer. Mm. All that work trying to find Kara, and now it's just gonna be. Yeah. Oh, God damn it. Oh, a new mirror. A new mirror. Great, they've done it. And that's the fortress. He got us here. He also stuck you in a pod when you were just a child and sent you to a foreign planet alone. 
He banished you, Carl. Oh, damn. Just like my father banished me. I should have just slit his throat when I had the chance. Oh, she attacked him, didn't she? To. She attacked him back Instead, in that spiral. Instead, I conjured spiral. myself up a scar, and I, I let him live, for you. God damn you, Nixley! I never attacked him. Mm -hmm. It's very dark down there. I mean, it is a sewer, so I know it's, it's going to be dark, but it's still, it's dark. It's dark, dark. Yeah, the brightest thing is literally that green device. Oh, was he scratched? Oh, he was scratched. He was scratched. No, we're not losing John. Oh boy, oh come on, not Brainy. Oh, his soul. His. As if they're not already motivated enough to do this. As if they're not already motivated. Now they just have to save pretty much all their friends. But hey, now we get a Dreamer and Sentinel um, team up. Now we get this team up, so that's cool. Oh, oh, it's a tunnel! Damn, she is good. She is so very good. She's very good. Yeah, a tunnel, a clear path for Alex. A straight up clear path for her. Oh no. Her soul too. Sentinel, she used her name. She used her superhero name. Do what you need to do. Just, yeah, stab it, break it, poke it with a stick. Yep. Yeah. Let the souls go back in. Let all the souls go back in. Oh, that woman's back. That lady's back. Okay, that's cool. That's very cool. And Silas is back, yep. And all the other captured people, yep. Everyone's free. Oh, yep. Oh, yep. The Dreamer Lasso. There we go. Yep. Get him into the proto trap. Get him into the proto trap. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Okay. You did a great job, Sentinel. Great job. Yep. Go ahead. Take your best shot. You and I both know that can't hurt me. I know. Oh, she's breaking the last mirror. She's breaking the second mirror. Oh, God, Kara. Oh, God. Oh, no. Oh, she has to leave Nixley behind. Oh, she has to leave Nixley behind. John, Brainy, and Mia, your true heroes. And you can be too. To you, Alex, and yet today, you made the most painful sacrifice because it was the right thing to do. And I don't think I could do that. We all have different life experiences and perspectives mm. and strengths. You all want the same thing: to do and good, if it for to your be good. Brilliance in making that device. And the prototype. You know the ghost. Yeah, prototype was great. Here, Lena. You always have, and you always will. You are the only one with a decent taste in scotch. <laughs> well, she is part Irish. She is part Irish, yeah. Alex, can you remember all the times Kara blew her powers out? It's only happened a handful of times. <laughs> uh, uh, once was in the fight with Red Tornado, and then another was all the way back in high school. Back in Midvale? Midvale. Yeah. That's the key. The dreams. Yeah. If we want to bring Kara home, we have to go back in time. They have to time travel? To Midvale High. They have to time travel. Can they do that? Can they time travel? Can they really do that? I mean, I know they've done it before, but like on this show, I'm not sure. Oh, boy. Oh, did she lose her father in that explosion too? Did her father die in that explosion too? I guess I have to find out in the next episode. Yeah, or at least, you know, I think maybe... My assumption kind of is that he died in that explosion too, but damn, god damn. Okay, yeah. So that episode was fun. Um, I feel like this one. I don't. I don't know why. It, it, it didn't really feel as engaging. Like it felt like a lot happened, but I don't, I don't know if it was just my mood going into the episode or if it was just something else. But I just didn't really feel as engaged for quite a bit of it. But either way, it was fun. It was fun. So we had Lena officially joining the team she officially uh, officially officially joined the team and she was g being given the watchtower tower tour by Nia that was amazing that was really fun so she's you know taking one step in and she's already creating devices she created the, pro tra the, the prototype thing like the thing from Ghostbusters and I'm so glad they made that, that they confirmed that reference I mean 
it's almost it's next to impossible that if they actually do something as visually accurate as that, then the, that they won't make a reference or something. And especially that Brainy himself is the one to actually make that reference was um was cool. So like you know she um she uh, you know went in she created these devices and even with the recording crystal did some cool stuff with that. But then she still had the issue of feeling like she just yet wasn't yet ready. And I think she is still I think you know she's. It's. I think it's good that they didn't immediately kind of call back on her having left um, Luther Court because of the stuff with because of the stuff with Lexi. It, it, I think it, it's good that they, they actually um, kind of focused more on how she's moving forward as opposed to what was in the past that she had to deal with because she's already she's already dealt with what's what, she's already dealt with what was in her past. So she now can actually happily move forward and happily move into like a new future like a brighter future knowing what she wants to do knowing who she wants to be with and all that kind of stuff so it was cool there but she still had that kind of inner conflict of actually fe- feeling like she had to atone for her sins and especially her kind of her ongoing kind of emotional feud with Supergirl like that actually inadvertently caused all of this and her feeling even more her, her emphasizing that her war with Supergirl was what actually led um car to the phantom zone and actually got Lex even more involved in all of their lives and their affairs and everything so she felt like she had to go off and do some more kind of um, atoning for that kind of stuff. So that was, you know, I think it, I think it kind of, kind of goes to like show like who she is when, like you know, it. it I mean, it speaks more volumes to her character that, to her character that, that it speaks more volumes to her character when she actively does care about the people she, you know, ends up hurting in her path to kind of unleash her emotions and, and, and like, unleash her, you know, stresses and everything, where, you know, it, it, it's not like she doesn't... She blames herself more than anyone else. She, like, she, she she literally blames herself more than anyone else for what's happened. And even in, 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 the, in the last season, like, or, like, we had her profusely and very emotionally apologising to Kara for what she did and, 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 and for what happened and how Lex had moved forward with her known a cherry thing to try and use against her and the rest of the world so Lena is you know she is very apologetic maybe just maybe like a little bit more than she actually needs to be but it it, it literally it's it's a result of years of emotional trauma years of being led to believe that it's her fault whenever something goes wrong and years to being like abused of the hands of Lex himself and maybe even Lionel and and, and um L- L- uh, Lillian too so yeah, hopefully this season actually shows us Lena, you know, finding out that when she does make a mistake, all she does need to do is apologize and learn from it. But then, not everything that goes wrong is her fault. Not not not, not everything that actually has gone wrong has been her fault directly. So she is literally, she can literally just be seen as a person trying her hardest who makes mistakes. And sometimes, sometimes, sometimes people get her. But you know, she again, she like like years of her to brought out something in her that she never meant to release onto the world, and she didn't, n- n- never meant to actually have Kara be trapped in the Phantom, so, like, that is all Lex is doing, that is literally all Lex is doing, he picked up the Phantom, like, him, Lex being Lex, got, fan- got Kara caught in the Phantom Zone, got her trapped in the Phantom Zone and everything, so, he also needs to learn to actually assign the blame where it's actually, I think, I mean, it's easy, it, it, it's easier said than not, and like, anyone else in that kind of position, will, like, with those kinds of similar life experiences will know that, you know, like, not blaming yourself is much, much easier said than done, but it's still important to know when not to, it's still important to know when not to beat yourself up and, and, to, and when to actually assign the blame where it's more accurately delivered and everything, so hopefully we see Lena actually overcoming some of that trauma and actually learning to work better with the team and actually understanding that, that they all love her no matter what and they're all there to support her and appreciate her as she should be and treated with the respect that she deserves and everything. So yeah, hopefully this season has some bright stuff in store for Lena. But yeah, that stuff was Yeah. But I will say the positive, the <coughs> the um the consolation for that pain was definitely the Lena and Alex partnership. Lena and Alex have a great friendship throughout this series, from what I've seen personally and how I've kind of been viewing the show. And it's good to see some of it actually returning, like despite the hopelessness and you know downfalls and tragedies they've been experiencing so far. Like like seeing that partnership return in some form was really really great, and they they get along well together. I think it's also good. I think we didn't see it necessarily. Like like we we, we we didn't actually see them actually doing it or talking to it, but to see them actually putting their goggles on and getting sciencey together and doing something was really fun. And again, I think, you know, I think, 
I, can't, I don't know when, I think it was in season 3 maybe, season 3, like, around about, so like, they did, like, at some point they just kind of dropped, like, um, Alex herself actually having, like, any kind of science background, any science background, because she does, she does have a pretty strong science background, like, it's how she started, I think, I think she actually did actually start off in med school, but then she actually kind of dropped off and dro- dropped off and dropped out, and then, um, Jean, as Hank, found her and he employed her under in into the DEO under the guise of being the FBI and everything. So she then went there, and I think she might have finished her degree or something. Or she, she, she might have finished something, but she might have finished something. But she, I think, even if she didn't really finish like college or anything, like like she, like, she still has enough of a, of an actual passing knowledge to actually, you know, figure things out and to actually understand things and help with sciencey stuff. So she she so she still has that knowledge even if they don't really show it as much. Um, but it's cool to see that she actually was able to stick, stick around with Lena, and I think, yeah, again, like, her being with Lena, her working with Lena was really, really cool, and it, it always is really cool to see them working together, because like, I think those two characters are very, very unique in their own ways, but then but then the way they get along, their kind of chemistry, the word, like, the, the fact that they kind of identify the same kind of qualities and um, strengths and perspectives in each other, and, and the, fact that, the fact that they both love Kara in their own ways, in their own individual and unique and special ways, is what kind of helps them actually, and especially in, in like as shown in this episode, is what actually helps them kind of work towards a common goal. Even though I think I think in this episode they actually did do a good like a like a you know like a like a um like a spontaneous enough job of actually flipping that over. Like as soon as Lena's done creating like a device that could help with that car, it's like yeah, you know what? Like at, like like at, like Alex is at, at Alex's strength of putting the city and its citizens above her own sister are shown, and she even explains it like you know she was trained. I mean. She, I mean, she was trained to be a soldier to actually think logically before she thinks emotionally or to even think logically over thinking emotionally, but then she was raised to protect Kara at all costs. She was actually raised by by, by Eliza to protect uh, to, to, to help protect Kara and to protect her secret at all costs to actually make sure that she didn't draw too much attention. Like, if you go back to those, like, like that Midvale episode back in Season 3, I'm pretty sure it was, or Season... No, Season 3 it had to be... Season, season 3 or Season 2? I don't know, there was a, there was a, there was a flashback episode in season two or three that kind of showed, like, you know, like, like what their childhood was like, and it was actually the first time Kara had used her, but, like, that was literally the first time Kara, Kara had used her powers to save Alex from that dodgy police sheriff dude, um, so, you know, she, she, she's been raised to protect Kara and to make sure that she's safe, but then she's been trained into adulthood as a soldier to actually think logically and to think, and think, you know, smart and stuff like that, so to put the needs of the many above the needs of the few. So she then, to see those inner conflicts at work here too, like, like even her describing to Lena later on, like, you know, it took everything, like, it took every last ounce of strength in her to not just drop everything and to turn around in that tunnel and to to drop everything and, 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 and to, to take every other chance she could to save her. Like, it took everything in her to not get the job done as Sentinel and instead to follow her heart as Alex Danvers and to get Kara back. So her strength is unparalleled. Her kind of motivational and emotional and heartfelt strength is is unparalleled and Alex is just an incredible character overall. She's an incredible character and stuff. So 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 so, 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 so to see those kind of characters paralleled against one another, like you know, like Lena feeling so guilty and so heartbroken over what she did that could that, 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 that led to all of this, and then to see Alex, like uh, uh, like Alex, be having been so heartbroken and being so determined to get Kara back, to see them having to actually switch sides and having to do the opposite things was really interesting, and especially knowing that deep down Alex didn't want to have to do this, but you know she knew that she she knew that she had no other choice, and and, and again like with her training you know, like, like, that training helped her be able to fight her impulse to actually go with her family over innocent people, and again, like, that's the whole, like, that is pretty much the hero, like, like, like the, the the job description of being a superhero is pretty much emphasized in that one, like, you know, when your family, when your friend and your loved ones are in danger, you have every possible impulse acting all at once to actually save the people you love, but then you got to put the actual innocent civilians who matter just as much, if not more, above everything else and that's what you know like that i think i think it's like like i think i think there was a line that they used in this but i can't remember what it was but i think i think that whole concept and that whole kind of I- idea was pretty well fleshed out and explored in this episode which, 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 which i loved that much as well like, like like they're both human alex and lena are both human but you know I, 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 alex being alex having her own training and she even emphasized that too with like lena not feeling not feeling like she belonged she was you know feeling too emotional or too kind of struck, struck down over what she did 
in the past. Um, you know, like like Alex highlighting it, her, Sean, Mia, Brainy, and even now Lena. Like 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 they all have their own past mistakes. They all have their different life experiences, and they 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 all have their different strengths and perspectives and their ways of looking at things. But what unites them as a team is the fact that they all work towards the same common goal. They still love each other despite their differences, and and, and they still work together because. They know each other. They trust each other. They they, they 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 listen to each other. They hear each other out, and they actually come up with. They actually use the time to come up with different different ways to to help accomplish the same goals and everything. And that's what makes them a team. That's what makes them the super friends. So, yeah, see, seeing those kinds of like seeing Alex and Lena explored and written in this episode in that way was really fun to see. And again, like that partnership, as I I, I think as brief as the but I think the partnership in this one in terms of being Sentinel and Lena, I think I think. Le- Lena doesn't really have her own kind of hero name as of yet. I don't know if they'll actually give. I mean, I don't know if they'll probably give one because I think she she herself doesn't really see herself as a superhero. Like like she sees herself as Lena Luthor. She sees herself as like a part of the team in the way that she provides them with the intel and the, and the tech and the gadgets. I mean, she's pretty much a female Tony Stark on, 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 on like in that kind of manner. She's pretty much a female Tony Stark. So. You know, Lena Luther is you know like she pays for everything. I mean, I don't know if she can. Actually, I don't know if she can pay for everything now because she's given away the company. But you know, she designs everything, comes up with all the tech solutions and everything. So she is an integral part with ever actually having to go out and to, to go out in the field and stuff. So yeah, so to, so to see those two characters actually somewhat reigniting their partnership in this episode was really fun to see. So I look forward to seeing how the rest of the season treats them both individually and together as a pairing too. So. That should be fun again. They they are both still working towards the same common goal. Like they want to save Kara. They want to bring Kara back. You know, even if for different like for, for different ish reasons, they still have the same kind of motivations, the same goals, the same kind of end game insight and everything. So to see how it all comes into fruition should be pretty neat. So yeah. <laughs> and speaking of um Alex and Kara, well, speaking of Alex, we also had you know Alex and Kara. So Nia kept on dreaming of Alex and Kara. Um, and I'm sure there's fanfics in other contexts about that somewhere, but in this particular context, that was about, um, that was about young Alex and Kara Emmett Bell, and I think in one of them, it actually showed, like, another guy, like, another Asian teenage guy. Now, thinking back to it, right, the only other Asian teenager that I'm aware of, that they, that, that they knew of, that I'm aware of, was, I think his name was Kenny, I think his name was Kenny, he was in that, in, like, in that same flashback episode he was the one friend that Kara actually had and he was interested in her but you know to begin with she didn't really reciprocate but then she lost him the sheriff killed him and everything so that was a kind of huge loss on her part so she lost him like like, like the only friend who actually understood her or actually took the time to get to know her and actually treated her like a normal human being ironically enough um you know he um he he, he was her only friend and then and, and, and then they lost him they lost him so I think I, I don't know if it was I think because if it is that same guy, they definitely recasted him. I think. I think. I think. The only thing I actually registered at the time was, oh, a t- like a, like an Asian teenager walking next to him, like in the same kind of. I think. I think he was. I think he was wearing like a football jersey. So I think. I don't know if Kenny actually. Kenny was never a part of the team. He he was he was picked on. He was bullied a lot by 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 the football team. But he was never actually with them. He was. I think he 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 was a a photographer himself, and he actually knew that. Um, Kara was super cool. He actually took a, a picture of her flying past in the sky and everything, so he knew. Um, but yes, yeah, so I I don't know if it was Kenny. If if it was, then they likely recasted him, which I don't know what the reason for that was. But either way, or or, or maybe it was just just like another. I think I think because I, I I I I don't even know if that's actually going to be set what, like that far back, or if it's actually going to be set like after the uh, after the event, and there's just like another Asian teenager at the at the school that they're now friends with, or what's happening. I think I don't know. There's really not much context to it besides from this. Oh, it's young. It's young Kara and young Alex actually walking through like a like the I think the the football field of Midville High School, and there's another and there's another guy with them. So for whatever reason, that dream is happening in his head, and and it turns out that's the key. It turns out that is the key. So I think I think that what that was one of the, that was one of the occasions where Kara actually had like a power blowout type of thing that left behind some DNA, and then stuff happens so yeah so then they need to travel back in time so yeah again time travel it's a thing it has happened but most prominently either on legends a a show that specializes in more appropriate time travel or the flash that specializes in more you know consequential time travel so supergirl i can't recall 
any particular time where they were actually. Tra- I think no, I can't. I think I think it was in season three, wasn't it? With with the rain, like 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 the world killers killed everyone. They killed the entire team, and then I think it was Kara who actually had to use a stone or something to actually travel back in time and then stop the and then to stop the the world killers before they before they did the actual damage. So yeah, I don't I don't I don't I don't, I don't know how they're gonna travel back in time with this though because they. Probably because my mind is too fried right now to think of any any kind of theories or any kind of methods, but either way, they're gonna have to find a way to try. I mean, I'm sure Lena can come up with. Geez, oh, I'm sure I'm sure Lena can come up with something. She she came up with the Ghostbusters style trap for the Phantoms, which is super duper cool. So I'm sure she can come up with maybe maybe something similar to Endgame, like like a time travel GPS watch thing where they just travel through a quantum realm and they just you know travel back in time just easy peasy lemon squeeze so i don't know but I'm, I'm sure they'll find a way i'm sure they will find a way and i'm sure they can actually find the dna they need i mean i wonder if that's going to mean that they actually run that, that they actually run into their old selves if they actually run into their old selves and then i think because then young young alex meeting old alex oh my god that that is going to blow that that is gonna blow me away. That is gonna blow so many minds. Um young Alex meeting older Alex, like that is you know, especially if you compare who Alex is now to who she was back then, you know that mm, that is gonna be that that is gonna be an interaction that just breaks the space time continuum, but it would also be a super cool interaction to see. Like, like that would also be a super cool, like, given you know, like, like Alex in the future reassuring herself that everything's gonna be okay. She's gonna figure herself out. She's gonna figure things out. She's gonna be okay. She's, you know, stuff may seem really, you know, dim at times, especially with having to, you know, look after Kara. But you know, Kara is is her sister. She loves her so very much, and things will be okay. And 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 she's gonna be okay. You know, like I think. I don't know if she, you know, like, if she still considered herself kind of, like, in the closet when she was younger, like, uh, at that age, but either way, she's just going to, you know, be reassuring her things are okay, you're going to figure yourself out, it's going to take time, but it'll all be worth it in the end, and you'll meet Kelly, and you'll be in love forever, and all that kind of stuff, I don't know, but, you know, like, knowing who Kari, knowing who Alex is now, someone so much more secure in her identity, someone who knows herself as a person, someone who actually has a more secure background and setting and everything, I, I, I can't help but imagine how that might go down, but again... We don't even know if the time travel is actually going to go down in the next episode, if it's going to, or, or, or if they're just going to, if they're going to actually, if they're going to spend the next episode finding a way to time travel, and then the episode after that they're going to actually do the time traveling. I don't know, but either way, it's going to happen. And then Alex is likely. I mean, I, I mean, Alex being the one connected to, to Midvale High, she's definitely going to be one of the people because they they might have some people going back and then some people staying in National City to actually secure to hold down the fort and everything. So. It might be a select few team members actually going back in time and then others actually staying behind and everything. So yeah, Alex will definitely have to be the one going back. She's the one who actually knows how to navigate that kind of area of time. So yeah, oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy. That should be fun. That should be fun to see. But yeah, I think we had some cool Nia and Dr- um, Dreamer and Sentinel team-ups too. Like like literally Jean and Brainy getting picked off by, by the Phantoms and immediately converted and then Dreamer... And Sentinel having so having like the briefest of team ups, and even Dreamer's powers as well, like her creating that tunnel, being like you know don't stop, don't think, just go, just get through as quick as you can, and she'll hold the rest of them off. And then her creating that tunnel, and then Sentinel running through, that was cool. We we need more Dreamer and Sentinel. We need more 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 Dreamer and Sentinel team ups, and hopefully Guardian, hopefully Kelly joining in as Guardian too, like her jumping into the fray, and that kind of trio um would be just fucking awesome to see. But yeah, hopefully all in good time. Hopefully all in good time. But Nia's dream. So now she's finally now that she knows um what the significance is. I think I think I think Nia herself is actually having trouble actually still inter- interpreting her dreams and interpreting what they mean and actually understanding them. And, and and she still kind of wishes her mother was here. She still wishes her mother was um around to actually help her understand things. But yeah, I think I think it would be cool if they could actually have her reconciling with Maeve. I think in 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 this season, if they could actually have her kind of calling Maeve up, or maybe just like like reinitiating contact or something. But I don't know if that's in the books. Um, because yeah, I think I don't know. I think I think it would just be cool to see that you know like 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 she still has that family in her corner, and she still has like Maeve to turn to, and she still kind of you know can reconcile and actually patch things up and everything. But because I think it's I think it's clear that what happened last time was like an emotional outburst. So I think if they can clarify that, if they can actually have Maeve, or or or, or if they can even have Maeve coming to National City and actually doing her part and actually apologizing and stuff, then that would be 
Cool, but I guess yeah. I think we just have to kind of wait and see. Because like, other, other, like, otherwise, I don't, I don't, I don't know what other resources people, what other resources or people she has to turn to that actually have a background in this, in this kind of thing. So I don't know what other hope she has. But either way, I think I mean she, she has John, she has Alex, she has Brainy, she has Lena now, she has everyone else that she can turn to and talk to. But none of them are really kind of you know fluent in. Um, there was a word for it, wasn't there? I think. Omnipotent, not omnipotency, not on um onomatopoeia. No, and definitely not onomatopoeia. There was another word for her powers, like 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 the word used to describe what she could actually do, like what her powers actually were able to do. But I can't, I can't really remember it right now. But either way, like interpreting dream language is not something that anyone else, anyone any, anyone else on the team on, on the team can do. So you know, besides from the occasional motivational talk and and conf- confidantness, like there's not really much she can turn. To them for so hopefully that would be enough motivation for either her to seek out Maeve or for Maeve to seek out her and patch things up and everything so hopefully all in good time hopefully all in good time and we had Brainy stress eating he was doing the most human thing on that show and well, one of the most human things on the show that, that, that he had ever done or, or, any, or anyone else had ever done he was stress eating he was not really he was not as good at embracing his emotions like Lena had advised he you know like shouting wasn't enough for him he, he felt he needed to to eat to fill the void and yeah I, d- I don't know anyone who can't relate to that i do not know anyone who can't relate to that you know eating you know we're, 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 we're like when you're stressed out when you're dealing with something big and stressful and when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when you're dealing with that many emotions all at once you know something that very many people do is eat and oftentimes it's junk food oftentimes it is it is almost it is almost I will be highly surprised if, if there's anyone out there who actually gorges on fruit and veg or fresh food or anything, anything healthy in terms of Christ. Like, I, like, I, like, I, like, I can't imagine any, like anyone actually gorging down on, like, you know, a basket full of apples in a time like that. But, you know, actually, you know, if it's, like, crisps or cake or cookies or donuts like he was doing or, like, a pie or just just anything you know, remotely, like, not strictly unhealthy, I mean, the amount of which could be unhealthy, but nothing, like, strictly unhealthy in terms of the ingredients, like, in, like, donuts, again, too much of them can probably make you, you know, throw up, or can do something else, but either way, it's, like, you know, like, just, just, just the unhealthiest of junk food, anything that actually, you know, you look at it, and you're like, oh, yeah, I want that immediately, and stuff, and he, and then he, he just wasn't too, too, too good at actually consuming, at actually dealing with his emotions, he was in, embracing them, and actually dealing them, and then they made him feel empty and bad and sad and everything. So then he jumped into the nearest box of donuts and just started gorging on those. I think he had like two or three boxes in, in this episode alone. So yeah, but then he's like techno organics. So I don't I don't know if he actually I don't know if he actually can put on weight in the same way that humans can. So I don't know if, if like I don't, I don't know like where it's going or if it's just being processed by his, his by his more technological parts or was happening but either way he was very relatable in those scenes alone and then even when Nia offered her own kind of friendly ears to listen and to to be there for him he was just like you don't know what you know like no he, he's fine he's just like in denial about his own emotions and then as soon as Nia walks away as soon as she's off like out of view he just like yep yeah, just, just jamming the next donut in his mouth so brainy super relatable super duper relatable and then yeah, that is all the stuff I can remember going down on Earth. So that was fun. So they did. They defeated the Phantom Prime. They defeated the Prime Phantom. So he reduced back into regular size, and then all the souls were freed, and then all the humans were rescued, and even Silas came back. Even Silas came back to us. All the other humans were rescued. So that was that was cool. But yeah, back in the Phantom Zone. So yeah, next day I won't lie. Like when I, when you know we saw that Kara heard the attack going down, and then she ran into into the actual supply room and found. Nixie with something in her hand next to her father who was injured. I was like, wait, did what I think happened just happen, or am I just imagining things? And I was like, you know, I'm I'm not gonna bring anything up in in case it's just like a out of the box assumption or something like that. But either way, it does look a little suspicious. It does look kind of suspicious. It does, you know, look look, look like she literally just attacked him. I don't know. Well, no, well, which is later revealed that she did. She did um shapeshift into. One that well, went into one of the beings that actually kidnapped him to begin with, and then actually attacked him, and then made it look like she chased him off. Um, 
But yeah, Nick Slate is now on a path of vengeance. She's now on a path of vengeance. Like, her plan is to go back to the fifth dimension eventually and then exact re- revenge and take out anyone who never any, anyone who never stood with her. Not, not not just anyone who wronged her. She doesn't, I think she's, she's going to effectively kill her father, but I think she's also going to exact her vengeance on, on everyone who refused to stand with her and stand against her father. So she's holding a grudge against pretty much everyone in, in the fifth dimension. Um, but now she, but then her plan after she found out found out that the mirror could work, she actually then wanted to go to Earth and have a little bit of fun there, whatever the hell that means. Probably evil, you know, trickster things. Probably you know, fifth, fifth dimensional trickster things. Um, but she wanted to actually go through there and have some fun first. So, so she she went to the dark side. She turned to the dark side almost immediately after, and I think she also tried to convince Kara that her father was not only dead weight, but but but. but not not only was he dead weight, but also that he was actually evil for, for actually sending her away to to Earth through the pod after Krypton got destroyed. So she was, I think, I think, I think with that stuff, she was she was pretty much just projecting because I think she, I think you know, she from the, from the moment she met Kara, she could tell that Kara wanted to save her father to get him back and actually bring him back and everything, and and, and that he and also that he was nothing like. Um, Nick Slate's father. So I feel like for the most part, that was like a fairly obvious projection. Like, oh, my father was evil, and he sent me away, and yours sent me away. So it must be, you know, it must be like must have given you the same feelings. Must have actually, you know, um, been for the same reasons, or like you know, giving you the same kind of abandonment issues and you know betrayal issues and and and, and like trust issues that it's given me. So she was just kind of projecting as hard as she could. Then. And stuff, and then they fought, and then in adversity, in adversity they activated the self destruct thing. So then, that, I think that pretty that, that killed her. That pretty much killed Nixley. But I'm curious as to whether at the end, I'm I'm curious as to whether actually this thing like 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 her father was in that same building. Kara's father was in that same building in, in in like the supply room and stuff. So I'm curious as to I'm, I'm curious as to whether I'm curious as to whether or not her father died in that explosion too. If, she, if she's actually lost her father, because I think that would then take out the that would then eliminate the kind of possibility of having to choose between one or the other. Because then, in the end, I think they did choose the one. They did somewhat choose the one or the other story storyline because Nixley then made it clear that she wasn't intending intending to take um Kara's father with her. But then she actually offered to actually just just leave him behind and to go through the portal themselves and everything. So she just kind of initiated that that kind of pick and choose story but with a much darker with 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 with, with, a, with a much darker kind of twist. So yeah. So yeah, so then the place self destructed. So I, I feel like, you know, I feel like there was a lot more potential in Nixley's ca- character than the I feel like there was more potential in her character in, in her character than to just have her turn to like a part of revenge or vengeance or anything like that. Like I feel like that was just like like it was just the easier way to get rid of her because then I think then that that kind of takes away their temptation to turn it into like a one or the other thing, like to then turn it into the, the whole kind of thing where oh it's like oh choose between her or your father. You, you can only you can only, you can only take one with you, or like maybe like the phantoms come along and you can only take one, and one's being taken away by by the phantoms and stuff like that. So I feel like it was just like the easier way, like oh if you just get rid of them both or get rid of one of them, then you can just easily pick the other one. And then next we we're, like we've literally only had her for like an episode, like like two episodes, so it's kind of easier for. Kara to choose her own father over Nixley and everything, so, yeah, um, so yeah, so now I think, again, I, 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 I genuinely cannot tell whether or not her father survived that explosion or if he was within that vicinity, because I think at the end she looked pretty mortified, so I was, I was wondering, like, oh, did her father, like, was her father taken out by that explosion, because, because then, again, that would mean, like, no need to bring her father back or bring Nixley back, like, the main goal, the main goal is still to bring Kara back, to bring Kara back to Earth and to get her back home, so, Taking out the other two definitely kind of clears out that equation and then just makes the the the, the free the, the whole escaping thing that much easier. So yeah, I genuinely can't tell. I cannot tell. I think I think I'm kind of going on the assumption for now that her father was killed in that explosion too. So it took out Nixley and her father because again her father had a broken ankle too, so he could not have gone out there quickly enough. But then you'd think that oh maybe I mean you would think that, but then they did show in real time like Kara was was actually was actually. Was, she was actually like rushing out the door as the explosion was happening. So then, so then the explosion took out Nick Slee behind her, and then she ba- she she barely made it out um out alive herself. So I have no idea, and my brain is too tired to come up with any theories or to actually you know contemplate whether or not she that they actually he actually survived. So I'm just gonna assume for now that he did not survive, and it is only Clara left. So that's a bummer. That's a bummer. She had her father for this long, and and he died because Nick Slee turned dark and wanted vengeance over actual freedom so 
Yeah, I don't know. I do not know. So that is two losses. So she's. I mean, her loss, her losing Mixley is kind of less impactful than her losing her father. But now she's actually alone, and she actually she actually has to find a way out on her own terms, and actually, or or or, or, or even just wait until um, even wait until um, the team finds her. So yeah, that is gonna be that is gonna be a rescue mission for the ages. So. Yeah, but yeah, that is pretty much all I've got. Didn't really write a, huge, a whole lot down for this. Again, it somehow felt, you know, like I was concentrating on the episode, actually trying to watch, it, actually trying to actually trying to actually, actually, actually trying to take everything in. But then at the same time, it's like you know, it didn't really feel all that engaging. Like minus like a few parts here and there, like like the dreamer dreamer dream stuff, and then the Lena and Alex stuff, and then some of the brainy stuff. So it didn't really feel like a whole lot went on. Or at least, like, it didn't really feel like a whole lot engaging. Like, 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 like a, a lot definitely went down, but it, it just didn't really feel as engaging as the previous episodes have. So I don't, I don't know if that's just if that's just me kind of you know being more tired watching it or something else. But either way, it was fun. Either way, it was still a fun episode. So I can't wait to see how they continue. And like, I think again, I'm I'm kind of anticipating it, it being like a. I mean, if we're lucky, we would like we, we might get the flashback episode next episode straight away, or they might decide to draw it out even further and actually have them figuring out. I mean. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out how to time travel because they have a, they have spaceships still they 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 have space travel so it shouldn't be too hard and again again knowing Lena she can whip up something in like like with the flick of a wrist in like ten twenty minutes tops so we should literally get the get the actual time travel stuff down and uh, done and dusted in the next episode but I guess we'll just have to wait and see so yeah but that that is pretty much it that is all i've got from this one so looking forward to the next one and seeing, seeing what else goes down uh but yeah that was supergirl season six episode four so thank you guys as always so much for being here and for watching this video if you guys enjoyed it then salt and burn that like button uh comment on what you thought of the episode and what you think is coming up next time on supergirl uh once again the full length reaction for this episode will be over on patreon so you can go check that out there and yeah that is it so i will see you guys next time.